Well, it's great to be with you as we start another week. So wonderful as we go day by day and week by week to know that God is the God of eternity and he is sovereign and we can trust him completely. And so as we look at this week, the potential for this week is enormous. And it is, of course, uh, the week of Christmas. And may it be a time of great blessing, even in the midst of the busyness and all the different stresses. I trust for your family and for your ministry and people that you know that God will use you in a mighty way. I want to encourage you with a wonderful thought found in Revelation chapter 1. I think as churches, we have felt fairly vulnerable over the last year and a half plus, as we have seen the government uh, come and bring restrictions, and and then that affects everything that's going on, and all of this has been uh, quite a challenge for churches. We've also seen the attack on evangelical Christianity, and we have seen uh, the just the outward push toward the left, Marxism, socialism, the whole moral revolution. And sometimes we can feel insignificant as a church, being part of a local church. You know, who are we? Well, as we always say, humanly speaking, we don't have anything to offer. But when we understand we as individuals are indwelt by the Spirit of God, and when we are yielded to him, we have divine potential. That is a great thing. But as a church, we need to understand that Christ is our head. And in chapter 1 of Revelation, we have a glorious manifestation of Jesus Christ as he is now at the right hand of the Father. Even John the Apostle, who knew Christ on this earth better than anyone, fell at his feet when he saw him. He was absolutely amazed at his glory, and uh, and it was almost like he was dead when he fell on his face, just like anyone who has ever been in the presence of God. But in that revelation of Jesus Christ, I love what he says, John says here under inspiration in verse 12, and I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Now, those candlesticks were so on fire, that was the first thing he saw, and then he saw the Savior. Well, what are those candlesticks? Well, the last part of the last verse, verse 20 says, uh, the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. So here's what I want us to see. Two things. Number one, where was Jesus located in this vision of John? he was located in the midst of his churches. This glorious, all-powerful King of Kings and Lord of Lords is identified with us, our lowly little churches. He's the head, and he is right in our midst. Secondly, these churches were like massive torches, and in fact, that caught John's eye before he actually even saw the Savior. That's an amazing thing, because the glory of the Savior was seen through these candlesticks, and it shows you what happens when Christ is in the midst of his church. Now, he's in our midst. We're indwelt by the Spirit of God. Where two or three are gathered together, he's in our midst, the Bible says. But when believers are walking by faith and when they're truly doing what God wants them to do, the glory of God can be seen through the churches. It really encourages me when I think of in the midst of this dark world, Jesus is right here and his glory is ready to be manifested in this dark world if we will allow him to work. So never look at your church from that weak perspective. Certainly we got all growth that needs to be accomplished, but if we are yielded to God and if our churches would have revival, we could shine forth like those great torches, candlesticks, and, and show forth the power of God in this day.